Jared, we should get going, I think. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, Mayor, everyone, welcome to Mill One. We couldn't be more excited that you guys are here. This has been a long project, and we're close to completion, but please pardon our appearance. We're still under construction. This building dates back to the 1800s, and when we acquired it, it was an abandoned building, and many people thought we were crazy for even thinking about uh, the final vision here. It's been an amazing project so far and we are really thrilled to announce we have several large companies that have signed leases here and are going to be the anchor tenants. These projects are never easy and they're what we specialize in. Our company, Modern Recycled Spaces, specializes in adaptive reuse projects of old abandoned buildings just like these. We try to transform them into thriving hubs of economic activity with a mix of businesses, artists, startups, and nonprofits, including our partner, Isles. These old buildings of the past provide beautiful spaces for the companies of the, of the future. Down the street in our Studio Park project, we recently had Buy Brands launch as a startup, and they sold for almost $2 billion, which was one of the best startups in Hamilton's history. We're really happy to announce that the founder, Ben, has launched this new alcohol company here, Crook and & Marker, and they're building their new headquarters here, and we know the same success story is gonna happen in Mill One. We really applaud the governor on all the efforts that him and his administration has made for both helping projects like these and encouraging renewable energy in New Jersey. This project currently has solar on the roof, but we are also working on applying for the new community solar program, which will really help both this building and local residents who are low and moderate income save on their utility bills if we are awarded this project. We often joke that we feel like we're doing amazing work with these projects and bringing great companies into New Jersey and into Hamilton, but sometimes we don't always have as much of a connection with the local neighbors and community. And that's why we're very excited to have Isles as our partner on this project with the amazing work that they're doing. While these projects certainly can be beautiful and can be fun, they're never easy in the beginning. And like most old buildings in New Jersey, they often have some type of environmental issue, which can be both time, time and they can be expensive to work on and can be a little bit intimidating. We applaud any new efforts that both the EDA the DEP and the governor's office is working on to make projects like these a little bit easier and any help is greatly appreciated and we couldn't be more excited to have everyone here for what we feel like we're very close to the grand opening of Mill One only a couple months away and we have even new marketing companies and photography studios that are coming to look at this space again and we're hoping to announce a big new company moving into this space which was once abandoned very soon. Thank you again, everyone, for coming, and I welcome Governor Murphy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Um, it's really good to be here. I've been very excited about coming today. So, Max, to you, thank you for welcoming us to Mill One. Uh, please give your dad my best. Um, it's also an honor to be here with the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection, Sean LaTourette. Sean, 
Nice to be doing our first event together in your capacity. We also have the New Jersey Economic Development Authority CEO, uh, Tim Sullivan is with us, as well as Tim's colleague, Senior Brownfields Advisor Elizabeth Limbrick, and the Chief Executive of Isles, an old friend, as Max said, one of the lead tenants here, Sean Jackson. Uh, we're also incredibly honored to have Senator Linda Greenstein. Linda, great to see you. Assemblyman Dan Benson. Um, and we've got, as well, our hosts, Mayor Jeff Martin here in the great uh, community of Hamilton and the great county executive, Brian Hughes. Uh, bless you both and thank you for having us. Um, and Tim, again, I want to give a shout out. I'm sorry about the Villanova result. I know your dad is also not happy. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For those of you off camera, Tim just left. Um, but I want to give you and Elizabeth and your team uh, a kudos for being at the forefront of so many of our efforts to position our economy for a strong, fair, and resilient future. This um, inviting and modern space exemplifies so much of how we can build that stronger, fairer, and more resilient tomorrow. Today, what was, as Max alluded to, a barren factory and grounds is now emerging as a community hub and an economic engine, a home for artists, an incubator for new businesses, and offices for nonprofit partners, most notably Isles, among so much more. We'll hear from Sean in a minute. It is no longer a place where jobs were, but a place where jobs are and will be. This is a vision for economic growth that we have espoused for several years now and why I was insistent that the new generation of state tax incentives that we enacted earlier this year include a specific program for Brownfields reclamation, redevelopment, and revitalization. We don't need to knock down New Jersey's history to invite today's economy in. The rateables chase doesn't need to end in sprawl when all we need to do is look at old spaces with new eyes. With every brownfield we reclaim and with every part of our economic past that is repurposed for our economic future, we prove these points. So the new tax credit, which is capped at $50 million annually, and Tim, I believe at no more than $4 million per award, will help us reclaim more sites like this and create more jobs, including many good union jobs. Tim and I were walking in together. Uh, this particular project got done without that incentive the fact of the matter is we could do a lot more of these, uh, and we will do a lot more of these. And to help maximize this benefit, on top of that, um, the application window is now open for the New Jersey Economic Development Authority's Brownfields Impact Fund, which will offer low-interest loans to support revitalization projects like what we see here. So not just the incentive, but the ability to get low-cost debt on top of that. Alongside other programs and initiatives led by both the EDA and the Department of Environmental Pro Protection, which Sean could speak to, we now have a robust statewide remediation and development program that will be able to do much more good in many more communities. This building was a part of New Jersey's industrial past, a sprawling textile mill built more than a century ago. The factory workers who constructed luggage and golf bags and Furniture and other stuff are long gone, and for years this building served as little more than a backdrop for the Amtrak and NJ Transit trains that passed by. For this community, it was a reminder of economic times past, and as it sat forgotten, many residents wondered if they had been as well. Now, instead of being a dead weight on the shoulders of Hamilton's property taxpayers, this site is contributing to Hamilton's fiscal health. It is an impressive new rateable that has come online without the need, without the need for new development or by con contributing to the sprawl that we don't need. Countless communities across our state, mostly in our urban cores, but also in many town centers, have proud historic buildings just like this. And what we see here is a model for the proactive reuse and redevelopment of our in industrial past to fashion a vibrant future. And Jeff, you deserve a lot of credit here because this is this is a community that is, in many respects, as Hamilton goes, Brian, as Mercer County goes, so goes New Jersey. And Dan and Linda know that uh, very well. Mill One, like many of the other projects, Max and his dad, Dan, and the team at Modern Recyclable, Recycled Spaces have taken on, show us a glimpse of what our future can be. And amazingly, it looks a whole lot like our storied past, only better. So it is with, it, with that, my pleasure to introduce an old friend, Sean Jackson is the CEO of Isles, 
uh, which is an iconic New Jersey uh, institution. And, and, and Sean, uh, with Marty, your predecessor and colleagues, uh, in my administration, in our time in office, we spent a lot of time with Isles on lead paint and lead remediation. Where's, where's Sean? He's behind me. Um, and, and that's yet another chapter of the, of the storied history of Isles. Please help me welcome Sean Jackson. Hey, Governor, I just want to take advantage of the fact that you're here to share something with you. We have some other tenants in the neighborhood here. Our bees. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the second year in a row, Isles has been awarded the best tasting honey in New Jersey. We have a hive here on the campus and around our 60 gardens in uh, the Trenton and Hamilton this. area. So we wanted to give you a little treat for coming oh, to Mill One. Sean, this adds even more buzz to the event. There you go. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you, Governor, and uh, to our, our many special guests, as Senator Greenstein, and Senator Benson, and, and uh, County Exec Brian Hughes and Mayor Martin. You know, been huge supporters of this project all the way through. We're grateful that you're here today, and grateful for your help as we go forward. And uh, to uh, CEO Sullivan and to uh, Commissioner Latourette and Elizabeth, we thank you for being here. You know, and we're we're glad to have you see what Isles and our great partner, Max and Danny Popkin of Modern Recycled Spaces, have been doing to save this historic old textile mill. More importantly than just being here today, we want to thank you for understanding the critical role that these old buildings play in our communities. This is the ultimate upcycling program where we restore an irreplaceable building keep thousands of dumpsters from local landfills, marry the vision of the past with a new and modern use, where we save another plot of open space and restore an engine of economic development. The Brownfield Loan Program that you promote today makes more projects like this possible in New Jersey's older communities. Isles, part of this complex, is what we call the Social Profit Center. It's on the far end of this big building. As you head out, you'll see. It took us 15 years to bring this to life, cobbling together federal grants, federal tax credit financing, and donations from over 400 private foundations and individuals. We certainly could have used affordable financing, especially given the challenge and the cost of historic restoration, as Max and I can both attest. And I can assure you, I've already talked to CEO Sullivan about the historic property reinvestment program that's a part of the governor and the legislature's new package and how we will be able to use that tool to finish the job. These new tools will help Isles and other nonprofits and other developers across New Jersey restore our older communities and these remarkable structures that have so much to say even today. Like right here. In 1913, before child labor laws were enacted, there were 500 teenage girls working six days a week, shoulder to shoulder, sewing shirts 10 to 12 hours a day in this complex. When the owner started ratcheting down the girls' wages, they walked off the job. Right outside this window, a 14-year-old girl named Karen Salitas was picketing, holding up a sign. Seeing her angered the plant manager. He raced out, knocked her over, grabbed her sign, and ripped it up. She screamed, and hundreds of girls on the other side of the building, meeting and talking about what to do, came running after him. They chased that supervisor up to East State Street, where he clambered into a sitting trolley car and locked all the doors. The police had to rescue him as those girls beat on the windows and the doors. The next day, the New York Times front page carried a story about this uprising, asking, what do we do about the kids working in our factories? This place became a legend in the youth labor movement, contributing three years later 
to the passage of the first child labor law in America. Now, a new story is unfolding here. Isles, this 40-year-old community development and environmental organization, is channeling the spirit of those girls who just wanted a fair and sustainable life for themselves and their families. Imagine how pleased they would be knowing today, a century later, their factory now houses this social profit center where nonprofits will create opportunity and hope for families throughout the region. Our motto here at the Social Profit Center is do good better. Governor, members of the legislature, with these new initiatives, you're doing just that. We thank you. What a, what a great story, Jeff. And it really adds sort of a weight to this event and to the renaissance of this building. So, and, and I think to the whole program. We were discussing a few of us offline before you mentioned the historic uh, tax credit, which is also part of the new, new suite of incentives. Um, it's gonna be a game changer in New Jersey. Uh, when you look at the states that have both the federal historic preservation credit as well as the state credit, it's night and day in terms of the amount of redevelopment that you see. And I know I want to thank again Dan and Linda and their colleagues because the legislature got that one uh, as it usually does right, right, on, the, right on, the, on the button. So thank you. And Sean, thank you to you and your colleagues. I mentioned he's the acting commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy who's been there, was at Catherine McCabe's uh, side during her entire tenure as commissioner. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am that he's uh, will, willing to step in and serve as our acting commissioner. Please help us welcome Sean LaTourette. Thank you for that introduction, Governor, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of my colleagues at the Department of Environmental Protection, and especially the dedicated pros of DEP's Office of Brownfield and Community Revitalization, some of whom are here with us today, Frank McLaughlin, Julie Wong, thank you for being here. Thank you all for inviting DEP to join you in celebrating the reimagining of Mill One, a project that reflects both, as we heard, a proud history and a vibrant future. An original leader of America's industrial revolution New Jersey has transformed itself into a leader in the revitalization of former industrial sites, turning once fallow and sometimes blighted properties into new centers of economic activity and community engagement. When we breathe new life into underutilized and contaminated sites, we can improve public health, deliver on environmental justice, and create new opportunities for New Jersey's residents and businesses. Throughout the Trenton area, DEP has worked with governmental and community organizations, including IELTS, to address environmental concerns, including through our Community Collaborative Initiative, a partnership with e between DEP and the Economic Development Authority. Thank you again, Tim. And together, we're pursuing projects that will have a profound impact on the greater community. One of those involves a site nearby, a seven, uh, seven and a half acre magic marker site, which was transformed into a 42 unit housing development for which DEP provided $3 million in environmental grants. Another effort is underway nearby for the Assunpink Greenway Brownfields Redevelopment Area, where DEP has invested over $4 million with the goal of creating open space that includes soccer fields and a waterfront walk. Because environmental justice is not just about reducing the disproportionate pollution that our minority and low-income communities have faced the worst of. Environmental justice is also about creating greater environmental benefit for the communities that have been foreclosed from enjoying it. And just a few blocks away, environmental investigation is being conducted on the Naparo rubber site, plans for cleanup and redevelopment there underway. And at Mill One, DEP is working with our partners here to secure grant and for grants for additional environmental work in the westernmost portion of this project. 
My DEP colleagues and I are especially excited with the recent passage of the Recovery Act that New Jersey will see even more redevelopment like this one. Through continued partnership with EDA and the resources available under the Recovery Act, we will be able to bring these important programs and initiatives to more communities so that spaces once considered depleted and lost can be reclaimed and reimagined. And I am especially proud to lead an agency and be part of an administration that puts its money where its heart is, where we recognize that by uniting economic development and environmental improvement, we promote the public good. Thank you, and to our project sponsors, congratulations. Thank you, Sean. Uh, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, God knows we need it. Um, we are the densest state in America, so we have the combination of density and legacy in buildings like this, and that combination makes what the EDA is doing so incredibly important, and it makes the DEP an existentially important organization. Um, I mentioned the EDA is well represented today. Uh, please help me welcome the senior Brian Brownfields advisor, Elizabeth uh, Limbrick. Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to be here today to announce these two new Brownfield programs that we are rolling out um, as, as part of really a greener, fairer community revitalization portfolio at the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. These programs are part of a larger effort under the leadership of our CEO, Tim Sullivan, and Governor Murphy to create an equitable environment and economic well-being for everyone. Governor Murphy just commented that we are the densest state in the nation. And if we want New Jersey to continue to grow, and prosper, we need to have places that we can develop in a sustainable way. Places that can provide jobs and amenities that will benefit the community. And brownfields really are the answer to that. Um, you know, as you can see by this great example here at Mill One, by redeveloping brownfields, we can transform blighted properties into community assets, places where businesses can grow and create jobs for New Jersey residents, both now and in the future. Historically, funding cleanups has been a major barrier for brownfield redevelopment. So at EDA, we developed this portfolio of programs that are going to address that gap and provide investment resources to redevelop brownfields. So first, we have the new competitive $15 million Brownfield Loan Program, which provides that low interest financing of $100,000 to $5 million per site for all aspects of Brownfield revitalization, all the way from assessment to investigation through to cleanup. And um, it even includes demolition, which I think is one of the very special parts of this program that we're going to see is really going to have um, a big difference for uh, properties in New Jersey, these brownfields, getting them revitalized. Um, we also put in really favorable terms for this um, with the idea of brownfield projects in mind and the fact that there's you know, remediation that happens at the beginning. So the first two years, there's no payments at all. The next two years are interest only. We have more information on our website, and um, as you heard earlier, applications are now open through April 13th. So we encourage uh, folks to take a look and apply to that program. And next, with great thanks to Governor Murphy and the legislature, we now have another program that is under development, which is the Brownfield Redevelopment Incentive. 
Under this new legislation, we will be providing up to $50 million, five zero million dollars per year in tax credits for brownfield redevelopment projects. And under that program, um, as you heard earlier, each project can qualify for up to $4 million in tax credits. Those tax credits are transferable. So again, that, this is gonna make that a very desirable program. By providing these brownfield investment resources, we're getting money into distressed communities. We're remediating problems that were created in the past and building a better foundation for the future. Our brownfield programs are going to drive inclusive and equitable development that generates economic prosperity and really supports healthy communities. We look forward to continuing our work to create and foster healthy and resilient communities in New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Really well done. Um, so as they say in showbiz, that's a wrap, Max. Uh, please give uh, your dad my best. I want to thank Max. I want to thank Sean. Uh, I want to thank, uh, actually, Sean Squared. Sean Squared, spelled differently, but uh, both Sean's, Elizabeth, in our rock and murderers row here of, uh, of elected officials, County Executive Brian Hughes, Mayor Jeff Martin, Assemblyman Dan Benson, Senator Linda Greenstein, to e each of you four, to the respective colleagues here, uh, hats off. This is going to be incredible. Here's the one deal I'd like to get. I want to come back and visit this place when you're up, fully up and running, um, and 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 really and really luxuriate in what is going to be a transformational event for Hamilton, Jeff, and I think for the whole area. Bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.